only the legendary Kelso won more money, and Forgo was just one victory away from passing that record. For his career, the eight-year-old gelding won 34 of 56 races, with 24 of the victories coming in stakes events. He was just $42,000 shy of the two million mark after six years at the races. And this week, after a series of reoccurring injuries, his owner, Mrs. Martha Geary, and trainer Frank Whiteley decided to retire him. As a three-year-old, Forgo didn't do much to attract attention until late in the season when he won the Romer Handicap and the Discovery at Aqueduct Racetrack. But the big race for all three-year-olds is the Kentucky Derby. And in 1973, there was only one big horse, the Magnificent Secretariat, and Forgo was a well-beaten fourth behind him in the Derby. As a four-year-old, Forgo really came into his own. He won his first four races that year and culminated 1974 with victories in three rich handicap races. Winning over a half million dollars, he was named Horse of the Year. And when racing fans thought of Forgo in 1974, the Woodward is what often came to mind as he displayed that memorable stretch charge he carried throughout his career. Mile of the finish, group plan leads. Arby's boy challenges, here comes Forgo on the outside. Arby's boy takes the lead, Forgo to challenge. Arby's boy and Forgo stride for stride, Forgo on the outside. 1975 was Forgo's five-year-old season. For the second of three consecutive times, he was named Horse of the Year. He again started his campaign in the early spring with victories at Florida's Hialeah Racetrack. Coming north in the summer, he won the Carter, Brooklyn, and Suburban Handicaps, and he topped off the season with his second straight triumph in the Woodward. And this time, he had to join the leaders much earlier. As they turn for home, it's for go on the outside in front by a head. Watch him, I second by a length and a half, and Avatar is racing third. And down the stretch they come. On the outside, Forgo. On the inside, Wajima. Forgo on the outside, Wajima toward the rail. Forgo has it by three parts of a length. Wajima is second, past the 16th ball, and Forgo goes away in front. Heliodora Vestine has aboard Forgo under the wire, the winner by two lengths. In 1976, Forgo had several classic battles with honest pleasure. Spotting him only nine pounds in the suburban handicap, Forgo's patented late charge fell a nose short. It was the last time Forgo was beaten by any thoroughbred that had less than a 19-pound weight advantage. Forgo met honest pleasure again in the cup that year, and this time they packed 137 pounds on the great gelding. And for a long while, it appeared it was too much. Racing secretaries felt that weight was the only thing that could equalize Forgo's talents with the best horses over his six-year racing career. After the 1976 Cup, Forgo lost four races, and in each one, he spotted the winner anywhere from 19 to 33 pounds. Yet, he came back to win his third straight Woodward in 1976, and was once again named Horse of the Year. By last year, Forgo was starting to feel the aches and pains any seven-year-old veteran of the racetrack wars would feel. When he lost the Brooklyn by an astounding 11 lengths to great contractor, the cynic said Forgo was on his way out. And when he finished dead last on a sloppy track in the Whitney at Saratoga, racing riders all over the country wrote his epitaph. Trainer Whiteney complained that the 136 pounds Forgo was forced to carry in that race was an unbearable burden. And when compared to the skimpy 103 pounds the winner nearly on time was assigned, it might have been. Forgo was through, washed up, finished, they all thought. A great horse who fell victim to young speed horses, the rigors of age, the pain of arthritis, and the extra weight in the jockey's saddle. If he was through, somebody forgot to tell Forgo. For in the Woodward last year, he put all his troubles aside to look like the Forgo of old. Forgo is on the outside and he's moving very fast. Coming for the wire. That's Forgo on the outside. He's back the lead as they come for the wire. Here's Forgo taking over by one. Silver Series holds second. At the finish, Forgo, despite the mud, is going to win it today. Forgo by a length and a half. That victory marked the fourth year in succession he won the Woodward, but unfortunately he suffered an ankle injury in the race and was sidelined for the rest of the year. He tried to come back this year as an eight-year-old and did win an allowance test in his first outing. But 11 days ago, on a sloppy Belmont racing strip, Forgo's racing career came to an end after he finished next to last in the Suburban. Jack Whitaker has followed Forgo's path to glory.
Jack is vacationing in Scotland this week, but has some thoughts about the great gelding. In the British summer of Wimbledon and the 107th golf championship played at St. Andrews, the news of Forgo's retirement comes as a disappointment, made acceptable by the fact that the retirement is the best and only thing to do. It is a tribute to the horse and to trainer Frank Whiteley that the big fellow got to the starting post the last few times. But the horse was game and the trainer smart. The horse is still game, but the odds were increasing that one of these days, Forgo would come up lame. Bone chips and arthritis did the big fellow in, not other horses. An occasional pound or two of lead in the saddlebag brought him to feed a couple of times, not other horses. My first memory of him was at the Bluegrass Stakes in 1973. He was as tall as the second story, and he got everybody's attention. Ten days later, he finished fourth behind Secretariat in the Kentucky Derby. There is some irony in the fact that Secretariat and Forgo were in the same graduating class. Not a particularly good year for three-year-olds was a phrase heard in that summer of 73. Secretariat, of course, retired to stud after his third year, and Forgo, gelded, went on to become the hero of the handicapped division, pointing up the turn in the road in thoroughbred racing. What if Secretariat had raced against Forgo at the age of four and five? What if Forgo had stayed healthy this year to meet Seattle Slough and J.O. Tobin, Aladar and Affirmed? What ifs are not reality? Reality is that Forgo is retired, and we thank Mrs. Martha Gary, the owner, and Frank Whiteley, the trainer, for the years we had him. Of the memory of the big horse coming on on the outside at the head of the stretch, lengths behind the leader, moving now like a 16-wheeler going downhill and getting up at the last jump to win. Memories of an outstanding thoroughbred. And oh, what if he were not a gelding? Thank you, Jack. Many felt Forgo might have been able to make another comeback, but the decision to retire him was based as much on sentiment as it was on his health. Trainer Whiteley said he didn't want to see the great warrior being carted off in a horse ambulance someday. And Martha Gary, the owner, felt the same way. She said, Forgo's been good to us. It's time we were good to him.